on this this road consists of um, faces but also includes line elements. These line elements are called stations. They have a subcategory of station. You can see that they have a different graphic style and therefore appear red. They also have a different subcategory. One of the enhancements to the direct shape elements is the possibility to apply subcategories to individual parts of the direct shape. Switching back to the presentation again. Another very interesting area affecting modeling is the dynamo environment. This is a separate open source project interacting with Revit through the standard Revit API but providing significant additional functionality as well. Especially Dynamo integrates the Autodesk design script constraint management and geometric programming language which can be used to very efficiently and simply generate complex geometry. Dynamo is a visual programming environment so this is suitable for people such as architects who may not want to deal with the nitty-gritty details of C-sharp syntax and loading add-ins or handling macros. Instead, you can connect boxes of functionality with their inputs and outputs and twiddle knobs to drive that behavior. This was one very exciting topic at Autodesk University and we see extreme amount of interest in this area. So if you're not aware of Dynamo yet, you definitely should take a look at it. As said, completely open source with a large active community on the internet. Another piece of functionality that was introduced in Revit 2015 was the custom exporter. Initially, this exported faces, so all of the objects visible in the Revit render command. That was very important for exporting geometry to visualization and analysis programs and making it much much simpler to uh, export an accurate representation of the entire visible Revit geometry without having to traverse the database element by element and dive into each element, traverse its geometry, handle all of the transformations individually. Instead, it enabled an add-in to hook in directly into the Revit rendering graphics pipeline and be notified of each face as it was streamed out through the rendering context. So this functionality is obviously also available in 2016, but we also add a new export context, the iModel export context, which processes the elements visible in 3D views. And this includes support for curves, polylines, points and text, as well as the faces and their textures. Another important modeling area is the new MEP fabrication detailing functionality. So the Revit and the Revit API now support part-by-part -part placement of segments, fittings and hangers, enabling a higher level of development with detailed connectors, specification-driven lengths, meaning a single length of duct can be separated into individual parts as needed and required for fabrication specifications. Couplings can be automated, libraries with grouping are defined, and there's validation of size, shape, direction, orientation and connectivity. And this comes with a user interface which enables direct interaction with this content with realistic behavior. So detail and all the required data to aid coordination modeling is supported and included. Here's a video demonstrating that kind of interaction. So on the right we see the MEP fabrication library with a collection of parts that can be used. On the left hand side we see the normal Revit element properties 
and on the graphics in the graphics screen you can see how the user can interact with the elements switch back and forth between the library the properties detailed internal geometry dimensioning and control the direction and connectivity of these elements. The MEP fabrication detailing comes with a complete API, so this user interaction can also be driven programmatically. New classes are provided, a fabrication service which includes support for fabrication service buttons, defining service behavior for given conditions, the fabrication part types representing the types for service buttons and conditions, and fabrication parts representing the components manipulated by this. Let's look at a quick demonstration of this functionality. So I'll switch back to Revit and load a different project for that. So I have a API duct and hanger model. I'll enable the macros in this document. And we see here a shape that we use to control the placement of hangers. So I'll, looking at this collection of macros, I have a macro to create an individual duct T, a macro to list rods and hangers, and there's a creation method that I'll run, which reads the shape of this geometrical element and creates a large number of MEP instances and you can see here each one of these is either a hanger or a duct element or a T element. So if I zoom in to this region you can see a large number of parts have been generated. Some of these are generic straight ducts, some of these are T elements and all of them are attached to the framework shape by the hangers. Switching back to the presentation again, we also have enhanced structural detailing properties for reinforcement and uh, structural engineering. So new shape types for cold formed steel and concrete, improved integration with simulation, code checking and detailing products within the BIM workflow. Enhancements have also been made to the structural analytical model. So the stick and surface models now define local coordinate systems which can be retrieved using the get local coordinate system method. New classes have been introduced to handle internal member forces. These apply to stick model elements to define and retrieve the member forces and their positions, forces and moments. Structural loads have been renovated, specifically the load and load combination classes. There's now a new base class for the point, line and area loads. The subclasses have been enhanced and the load combination, case, nature and usage classes also. The structural path reinforcement class has new methods and properties. So a complete renovation of this API. And finally, a new API only capability has been added to support bent fabric sheets. We have a quick demonstration of that as well. I'll switch back to Revit and open a project to create a bent fabric sheet. This project also includes a macro. It defines one single element, a floor. And if I run the macro in Create Bent Fabric Sheet, you can see that a bent fabric sheet with an element ID was created. And 
it's inserted inside the floor. If I zoom in on it a bit, you can see, get a more detailed impression of what it looks like. Finally, we have the area of efficiency. So how does the user interact with Revit? An important collection of enhancements was provided in the subscription release Revit 2015 R2. So this included platform and architectural enhancements plus MEP and structural functionality. This was already made available towards the end of 2014. It also included one API enhancement, namely a read-write workset API. So we now have methods to create a workset and to control name of worksets and the active workset ID. So finally, the workset API is more than just read-only. We have complete read-write functionality. There's also a new functionality to reveal the constraints. Some enhancements in the Schedule API to control the title and header displays. A new Datum plane base class for levels, grids and reference planes, which provides additional functionality. The Text Note API has been renovated. This is another example of more direct API access to the built-in Revit elements through an automated API generation system. So whenever we see a static create method on a class instead of the new text note creation method on the creation document, that is an indication that this API has been completely renovated and in that case also normally provides better integration and more API access. The Dimension and Leader API has been enhanced, so we have some new properties on the Dimension, Dimension Segment and Leader classes. Let's look at a quick demo of one piece of enhanced functionality that this provides. We have here a simple dimension and in this case the sample application is provided as an add-in with an external application interface. So I have two commands, one to align the dimension text with the um, one of the dimension points and the second one to freely move the dimension text to any position of my choice. Switching back again to the presentation, some enhancements have been added to the PDF export functionality. So now the table of contents includes links, views and sheets are also linked and hyperlinks can be included in the PDF export. We make use of this new PDF export functionality in the collaboration and interaction with BIM 360 Glue and BIM 360 Field. Another efficiency and collaboration piece of functionality is the export of CAD files to other platforms. Uh, other file formats such as DWGDXF or DGN where another CAD system might want to post-process the export generated by Revit. In that case it can be important to preserve coincident lines which were previously eliminated by the Revit export in which case the post-processing might uh, suffer from the lack of certain closed polygon segments. Now the export options includes a new property to preserve these coincident lines. One of the most exciting and important areas for creating a complete and accurate building information model is the ability to perform analysis on the building before it's built, especially energy analysis. So we want to implement all possible functionality to enable an architect or designer to analyze the energy behavior of a building while it is being 
designed and planned. So within Revit, we can show the energy analytical model. We can use conceptual massing and building elements together. And we can use this kind of functionality to provide real-time interactive feedback and access results from the Energy Plus engine running in the